ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. Jack Ross. All she wanted to do was dance, y'all. Ladies and gents, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a demonstration here because I still don't think people understand. This is a program we're going to be introducing at AmeriLegion, and it is our tax credit program. Now, it is important for you to note that we are not producing credits. We are converting deductions into credits by simply carrying them forward. Pay attention. We're going to use BARD to get a better understanding. Do you guys mind? This is Google's BARD, and we're going to use it to get a better understanding. Wake up. I have some business related bad debts. comma, these debts are related to my sole proprietorship, comma, at least five of the accounts are from loans I've loaned out to other people, and 15 are the accounts for which I had agreements with other organizations and or corporations and these agreements have been breached by the other party period instead of going to court comma our agreement allows for me to forgive the debt And the Internal Revenue Service says that I can write this debt off by filling out certain forms. Comma, can you show me how this is done and can you explain it as if you were talking to a nine-year-old? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the question is quite simple. Most people don't know that they have their own sole proprietorship. Every single person in the United States who files taxes also has the ability of writing out, writing off, excuse me, their own personal business. It's literally called personal business. That's what a sole proprietorship is. It's a business owned by an individual for which they are the sole employee. Can you have subcontractors in a sole proprietorship? Of course you can. You have the same rights as a sole proprietor as any other corporation. However, do your research on that because that's not my job. Now, let's see what the answer is going to be to this question. Now, Bard takes a couple of seconds because he's not typing up as he's responding. He's typing now. And then he's going to put the whole thing here. He says, sure, I can help you with that. A bad debt is a debt that is not collectible. 
This happens when someone owes you money and you are, uh, excuse me, and they are unable, unwilling to pay you back. If you have a bad debt, you may be able to write it off on your taxes. To write off a bad debt, you must establish that the debt is worthless. Oh yes, honey, it's worthless. This means that you must have taken reasonable steps to collect the debt and you believe that there's no chance of collecting the money. This has been done for every Amerilegion person and, pay attention, every AMCF person, client, member. Once you've established the worthlessness of the debt, you can write it off on your taxes. You will need a 1040X amended U.S. individual tax return to claim the deduction, and you will also need to attach a statement that explains the write-off. Here are the steps that it tells you you need to do. Ah, here's a simplified explanation of a write-off of bad debts of a nine-year-old. If you lend money and they don't pay you back, you can write it off the debt on your taxes, but you can only do this if you've tried to collect the money if you don't think you're ever going to get it back. To write off the debt, you will need to file a special form with the IRS. Now watch this. It's important. Wake up. On a business-related bad debt, Comma, an individual must, when filing their taxes, keep accurate records, comma, and they are allowed to carry forward any remaining portion of the bad debt that is not applied to the current year's taxes. Is this correct? Question mark. However, comma, the code has no provision for carrying forward bad debt deductions. Comma, it is a provision permitted by the Internal Revenue Service. Is this not correct? Period. Question mark. The IRC only permits carrying forward of credits and not deductions, comma, but there is an allowance or exception made by the Internal Revenue Service. Comma, however, comma, the code only recognizes a carry forward of credits and not deductions, comma, so in essence, comma, the carry forward technically is a credit and not a deduction if we're going by the definition afforded by the code, comma, is this not correct? Question mark. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, basically what I'm saying, as you've heard, and it's going to respond, under the IRC, there is no such thing as carrying forward a deduction. The IRC is the Internal Revenue Code. You are not allowed to carry forward a deduction under the code. You can only carry forward, pay attention, a credit. Why? Because the IRC did not anticipate carrying forward a deduction. It is permitted and or allowed by the rules. And because it's permitted and or allowed by the rules, guess what, homie? When you carry forward a deduction, it actually is technically a credit. It's a technicality. Let's find out if the deduction is correct. Hey, Watson, get over here. You are correct. 
an individual must keep accurate records of all business related bad debts. If the debt is not fully deductible in a year, it becomes worthless. The remaining portion can be carried forward to future years and the deduction as a short term capital loss. Now, pay attention before we go on. He is not going to agree in certain parts, and I'm going to have to clarify. So pay attention. The Internal Revenue Code does not specifically provide for carrying forward of bad debt deductions. However, the IRS has issued regulations that allows taxpayers to do so. The regulations state that bad debt deductions may be carried forward to the next year if the taxpayer establishes the worthlessness of the debt that it was incurred. The IRC only allows for the carrying forward of credits not deductions. However, the IRS has made an exception for bad debt deductions. This exception is based on the fact that bad debts are considered a type of loss. The IRS has determined that it is fair to allow taxpayers to deduct bad debts over time, even though the IRC does not specifically provide for that. Technically, a bad debt carried forward is not a credit. <laughs> However, it is treated as a credit for the purpose of the IRC. This means that a carry forward can be used to offset capital gains and it can be used to reduce the amount of taxes the taxpayer owes. So, ladies and gentlemen, I do want you to understand that nobody told this to me. I understood it because I understand how the laws of the United States are put together. I didn't have to go researching this. I just knew it. And if you go back and look at the videos on the tax credit, you'll see that I was already doing this and understanding this from the very beginning. Quite simply, if you go and look at IRS tax topic 453, you will see as you're reading that a bad debt deduction must be claimed in the year it was established. So if it must be claimed, must meaning ain't no other opportunity, then you can't claim it the next year, according to the code. They have made allowances. A lot of people have situations where they don't want to pay taxes. We have so many people. I ain't paid taxes in 150 years. And I ain't paying no tax to nobody. So ladies and gentlemen, watch this. I have not paid taxes for the past 32 years of my life, comma. I was listed as a non-taxpayer, period. However, comma, I must file taxes in order to claim my business-related bad debt deductions, carrying them forward for the last 28 years totaling $5 million in bad debt deductions, which I have clearly documented. Period. I know the Internal Revenue Service is going to assess late filing penalties for each of the years comma will my business related bad debt deductions offset the penalties for the late filings as assessed by the internal revenue service and is it likely that i might receive a refund question mark Stop listening. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to cough, ladies and gentlemen. And so, because it has just put together my question, 
I want to let you guys know that I've talked to many people saying they haven't paid taxes. Well, if they were to do their bad debt deduction and write off all of their business expenses for the past whatever many years they haven't paid taxes, including the years prior to that, and carry that junk forward, hoo-wee! Do you understand? You'll never be paying taxes ever again if you just follow the law. Follow the code. Follow the yellow brick code. Now, again, this is Bart. He's going to give us a simple answer. Huh. It is difficult to say whether your business-related bad debt deductions will offset the penalties for the late filings. The IRS will likely assess the penalties for each year that you're filed late. And the amount of the penalties, the penalty, pen, pen, penalties depend on the factors, including the amount of taxes you owe and the length of time you were late in filing. However, if you can demonstrate that you had a reasonable basis for not filing taxes on time, the IRS may be willing to waive or reduce those penalties. It is also possible that you may receive a refund if you are able to successfully claim your business-related bad debt deductions. The amount of the refund will depend on the amount of deductions and the amount of taxes that you owe. However, it is important to note that the IRS may assess interest on any taxes you may owe, so the amount of the refund may be less <laughs> than the amount of the deduction. If you are considering filing taxes uh, for the non-filing, it is important that you talk to a tax professional. Now, look, uh-uh, <clears throat> that ain't the answer to my question. I mean, he did answer the question, but no, I want a more direct answer, so I just hit that refresh button. <clears throat> it is difficult to say, so he does that again. Uh, Business-related bad debt deductions are all set to penalty delayed filing the amount, because it delayed filings, it could be more than $5 million. That's why he's saying that. However... If you are able to establish a bad debt, it is important to note the IRS is not obligated to accept your bad debt deductions. That's right. They're not obligated to accept your bad debt deductions. The reason why? Do you know why? The reason why they're not able, uh, uh, they don't do your bad debt deductions claim if you are sitting up there being outrageous and you ain't documented it. Okay? The IRS will review your claim and will make a determination based on the factors and circumstances. The IRS does not accept your claim. You may be able to appeal their decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not concerned about the IRS not accepting your claim. Because when you do the 1099, 1099A, 1099C, correctly, they accept it. You even get the acceptance. So there you go. However, if you're able to reduce the amount of taxes you owe by claiming a bad debt deduction, you may be able to get a refund. Ta-da! So this is what we're getting ready to do for everyone. You guys do not contact the organizations asking about this. I will let you know in video format when those services will be available. There is a lot going on. Now, I do want to let you know we're doing our taxes now as an organization. And let's just say this. We because these individuals are members we offset it offset it there you go some of their junk their payment by extending credits to them and we did so in advance what that's right we did so in advance well two people have since departed the organization by not following the rules and just so happens yesterday one individual was attempting to get his documents notarized thinking that they were going to receive those credits after they didn't complete the assignment that's one of the reasons why they were no longer part of the organization and i saw the email communication because all communications go through rome and rome said oh no you all need to understand that tax credits are dollar for dollar they are dollars remember we're dealing with technicalities here so if a tax credit is a wait hold on wake up <clears throat> I'm told that a tax credit is a dollar comma that technically it is a dollar for dollar reduction ie a dollar is this not technically correct? Question mark. Stop listening.
stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can't talk while it's still typing and that light up there is green or it will, t and I'll have to be doing exactly what I'm doing now after that. Okay, let's find out if tax credits are dollar for dollar. That's all we're that's all we're concerned with dollar for dollar that means they are a dollar equated to the dollar hold on let's make sure because i could be wrong he's gonna get technical with me watch him get technical because he got no other choice because he's got to toe the party line yes you're correct the tax credit is a dollar for dollar we don't care about if it's a reduction or not we care about dollar for dollar that's all we care about because tax credits is a dollar for every dollar tax credits are dollars once you understand that there are certain documents with the Internal Revenue Service that people can follow we're not following this for anybody where they can receive a refund for these dollars we're not doing that for you, but we will help you reduce your IRS debt, especially those of you for whom the IRS said you owe us money and y'all ain't paid them yet. You have your deductions. You have your net operating losses. I don't know why you haven't paid them yet. I don't know why you're being stu st stubborn and stubborn and doing that. Well, that's stubborn is stupid and stubborn at the same time. Okay, stubborn. Okay, so why you're being that way and not just offsetting the debt? You have no idea. If you owe debt for previous years and you use the credits to pay that debt for previous years, you may be able to receive a refund on the debt that you offset for the previous years. I know. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So, this is the service we're going to provide. Um... The individuals in the organization had to understand this first before we did this. So I'm going to do this right here because I need it, because uh, I need to show it to somebody. Now, with this being said, ladies and gentlemen, the way that I want to put this to all of you, the last two days have been a whirlwind. I went to see a doctor yesterday. The doctor said, you're pregnant. And I said, Doc, could you get her out of this room? She ain't even supposed, she's supposed to be in the other room. Okay, I don't need to be here in her medical business. Oh, I'm sorry. Then he said, oh, oh, okay, we'll take care of you next, sir. And so after speaking with the doctor, he said, it's not a tumor. And I said, thanks, Doc. I really needed to know that. But you do have a growth. I have a growth. Yeah. Where is it at? Whoa. Your torso. It's got two of them. They're called arms. Got hands attached to them. Oh, come on, Doc. Stop playing. And so I asked him to get serious, and he got serious. And he said, sir, you have some cognitive imperabilities. Cognitive imperability, what does that mean? I, I don't I don't understand. See, there you go. That's the evidence right there. I said, cognitive imperabilities. What's that do for me? He says it's what it ain't doing for you. Really? That's right. So guess what he told me, y'all? He told me there's this medication that they give people like me with these cognitive imperabilities. That's supposed to help with focus. I'm going to need it because guess what? Spending, I was up from 11, 18. I know the time because I looked at the clock when I woke up. 11, 18, Wednesday night. All the way until, what was it, 9 o'clock last night? Or was it later than 9? I don't know. Because I just, I fell asleep. I didn't go to sleep. I fell asleep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, being up almost 24 straight hours 
and doing so much yesterday and not having a break and being exhausted has caused some problems because I can't focus this morning. There is work I need to get done, but I can't do anything because my mind won't allow me to do anything. Which means for some tasks, it takes me three times as long, especially doing a motion. That's why I tell people, putting together a motion is not simple. It's not easy. Next week, we will, on Monday, this is a guarantee, you will have access to the child support document. Monday the 10th, you will have access to the incarceration contract. Both of them have an arbitration clause. There will be videos being placed on the net talking about the arbitration clause, which includes a confession of judgment clause, which means with that confession of judgment, you are to be able to go into courts, which allow for a confession of judgment. You'll have to do your research and get a confession of judgment, which will equate to confirmation of your award. Okay? Just that simple. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you will have to follow the rules. So there'll be videos done after this showing you about that. Look, some of you don't realize, some of you definitely don't realize <laughs> that the stuff you hear me talking about ain't nobody else doing this. So when there are a lot of people who say, I ain't watching his videos, no more. No too many antics. No, uh -uh, I don't care. I don't care if I can benefit from the information. I ain't watching it. So let me help y'all out if y'all don't mind. Uh, <laughs> you need to understand because I don't care. Okay. I, I really don't care. Here, here's the thing. Because this is important to me. I'm just giving information, and the majority of the information is free. The majority of the information is free. You have to do your own research, but you, you get the information for free. So if you're getting the information for free, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why people are complaining. It doesn't make any sense. It's very disturbing. So here's a song for you, ladies and gentlemen, by Mr. Jock. Ross. Hey, Jock, can you take us on out of here while I finish talking to these people? Okay, he agrees with me, ladies and gentlemen. So let me go ahead and see if I can explain it better to you guys like this. See, now I get to add another person to the list on a song for you. We have Whitney Houston. We have Patti LaBelle. We have Mr. Ray Charles. We have Mr. Solomon Burke. We have Mr. Johnny Hathaway. We have Mr. Otis Redding. Ladies and gentlemen, a song for you. I'm glad so many of them appreciated these lyrics. So, I told all of you that eventually all of this seven days a week stuff was going to take its toll and before I took that last vacation I told you guys I needed a vac vacation needed a break however this time there won't be any vacations or breaks I won't be allowing it anymore because I can't handle that anymore that caused a lot of damage the last time this is damaging no 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 stay out of my business I don't need your opinion I don't need you feeling sorry I don't need you telling me what I need to do I don't need you making suggestions. Keep that to yourself. What I'm saying right now has nothing to do with you. This is just me explaining something. Okay, I can take care of my own business. That's why it's called my business. That's why I get the right off my taxes, okay? Because it's my business. Thank you. You're absolutely right, Jock. There's no more important, more, more, more important to me. Because we, we've been alone. See? And But I'm singing these words for y'all so that y'all understand ladies and gentlemen 
I can't stop this from happening. I told you guys if you go back and listen to my videos that I've known since 2001, how I was going to end up. I only went to the doctor not just to confirm that there are some cognitive so-called issues, but I'm a little leery. He provided a prescription. I have to now go, and it's only five milligrams. I don't take their medication because it's chemicals. However, I am going to look at the side effects and do some research for my own personal sake of this medication that he's prescribing. Some of you are going to want to know what medication he's, he's prescribing. That ain't none of your mother business. That's my business. Okay? But, in a nutshell, thank you, Jock. What I'm trying to tell you is if you don't realize the toll that it is taking on my person to put this information out and to help you all out. Everybody keeps talking about they ain't got no money. Well, if you were to write off your debts, then you would have more money. We're talking about spot trading where people are earning a couple of dollars a day. But when you add up those couple of dollars and you just let them sit there and let them keep working for you all year long, you realize you end up having fifty to sixty thousand dollars at the end of the year, but that's because some of you don't want to do the math. Shame on you. Hey, I'm gonna let y'all go. I want to thank y'all for taking the time. I have another appointment today where they're gonna inject me with some cortisol shots so that I can move my arm. Because let me tell you, that pain for over a year and a half. Ever since that hammock incident that I told you guys about, that's been a lot. And now I have to start filing lawsuits. So I told you guys this is the year of the suit, and that's the stuff I'm working on. We'll be working on it all weekend. Those of you who are part of AMCF and the Fraud of Homeowners of America, please understand, and AmeriLegion, that you're all included in the suit. We've already talked about that. Those of you who paid the $49, Thank you. I couldn't explain it to you before, but not only is that the price for the filing of the miscellaneous filing for each of you, which have already been filed and they've ignored it, but, and those of you who paid the $49, you're going to get a percentage, but you didn't file the, send the paperwork like you were supposed to, you're going to get a percentage, but not a very high percentage because you didn't follow instructions. But those of you who sent the paperwork in, that paperwork has been filed. The request for a stay has been documented on the record. So we're about to take care of that court for that stupidity. That's the first thing. That's the first thing that we need to let you know. Uh, the second thing we need to tell you regarding all of this is we're getting ready to file an actual lawsuit. And the area in which we're filing a lawsuit, we will have a right to a trial by jury. I will update you after it's filed, like before. We don't want to give them heads up as to the angle I'm going because they listen to the videos, people. They listen to the videos because they want to see what I'm telling you guys so that they can be prepared for you guys coming their way. So with that being said, we will keep you apprised and abreast. Abreast? Abreast. What? Why ain't it ain't, ain't abreast? Because I don't eat chicken. Oh, okay. So have a good day, everybody. We'll talk to you the next time.